Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're going to look at the best bang for buck loadout that you can put together in 12 12 30, starting at level 15 for the weapon build, which we'll go through first, and then onto the rest of the kit afterwards. Level 15 is when you unlock Prepor 2. Here you get the 545 PP round, which was buffed in this patch to 36 penetration, meaning that it is very capable of taking on class 4, which is exactly what we're looking for and is the basis of the whole loadout. Our biggest threat as we move from the initial stages of the patch is players using class 4 armor more regularly, which happens quite quickly and is effective against almost everything you can throw at it prior to this point because you need something in the mid 30s of penetration to get through. With the damage still respectable at 44, PP fits the bill perfectly as the 545 AKs are in the sweet spot of manageable recoil without needing too much modding but are actually good at killing people wearing decent kits. So into the build we're going to run through two that are very similar and they come from Prapport 2. So we're going to go into Assault Rifles and what we're going to look at is the AK-74N and the AKS-74UN which are two of my favourites. There are some barters and other alternatives here like the Plum one. This can be gotten for 20k if you get toilet papers and toothpaste at the right time. But it's not always that good and so I'm just going to focus on these two because we know that we can guarantee get these for cash from the trader which is useful. So let's have a look at the AKS-74UN first. To build this out we're going to use the DTK muzzle which comes from Skier which is good for recoil reduction. So we're going to add this. Then the handguard, we're going to use the B11. Now remember, to get this view, you need to have workbench 1, but I think you probably will at this stage. So that's just a pointer, just in case you're watching this and you haven't got to the flea or you haven't got your hideout upgraded yet. On vertical four grips, we can use the RK4, which is the first one and the only one that we can get from the traders at the moment, which allows us to remove 2% of recoil. So we're going to use that, which is pretty good. And then in terms of the stocks, we're not going to mess around with any of the fancy ones because we can't buy them and they're expensive on the flea. So for now, we're just going to use the butt pad from Prapple 2, which is very good bang for buck. It's probably one of the best bang for buck attachments in the entire game. So this gets us to 69 ergonomics and 69 vertical recoil, which is pretty high on the ergo. You can increase this a bit more if you want to. I don't think it's necessary on this build, but you can if you want. And the best bang for buck here is the saw pistol grip, which increases it by another five. So if we add that on, we get to 74 ergo here. Now, the reason why we used the 74 UN in the first place was so that we had this dovetail mount. And what we can attach to this is one of these scopes. Now, I'm using this, the EKP Cobra, which reduces ergonomics by three. But what you can do from Prapple 1 is add the Cobra shade on the top, which is pretty good, the sight shade, and that adds three back. So this thing ends up not actually affecting our ergonomics at all. So we're at 74 and 69, which is pretty decent. In terms of the costings for this, if we go into find parts, we can go and have a look how much this will be. So we don't need to buy the cover, the stock, the magazine, or the gas tube, everything else we had to purchase. And we wanted to purchase these from the traders because we don't want to have a broken 74 UN. This one's probably got low durability. Actually, that's not the case in this case. So you can get it even cheaper, but let's just assume you're only getting it from the traders at this point. And this is going to cost you removing these things again. 75,000 rubles, which I think is really good for this build. I think this is very, very cost effective and is definitely worthwhile. Two other things that you can potentially do if you don't get on with the Cobra and you don't like this scope, there is another one that you can use, which is the OKP7, which I actually think is really nice. I like it, but you can't attach it whilst you've got a cover on because it's too big. I think it's because of this lip here. This attaches to normal AKs just fine with the cover, but the 74U has got this kind of weird metal part here. So you have to take off the cover. Once you've done that, when you open into here, you can actually use any of these now. And so we're going to use the OKP7. You see how much further forward it sits. And I like the reticle on this, but you lose a lot of ergonomics. You lose four for the actual scope itself, and then you lose five for not having the cover on. So it's nine ergo worse. Not that you can really tell, because if you use the saw pistol grip, then 65 ergo is still very respectable. And the weight of this gun is very, very low. The other point to mention is that because the B11 comes with rails already on the side, you can mount on a laser or a flashlight of your choosing. I don't always do this, but if you feel like it's necessary, you definitely can. The TBL, which is the blue laser, the NC Star, is the cheapest. If we go into find parts, we can link search on the B11, and we can go and see what the cheapest versions of these are for lasers and light devices. So the NC Star is 5K, but it's just a laser. Or you can go for this new one here. It used to be the X400, which is this one, $122 from Peacekeeper. This used to be the next best you could get outside of the flea. But now you can get this Olight for 9,000 rubles from Skier. And this is a new attachment. So you can either go for laser only, or you can go for laser and flashlight, depending on exactly what you want to do. So the shortness of this AK helps you to peak corners more effectively inside and the increased ergonomics and decreased weight of this weapon compared to other AKs gives you a really fast aim down sights as well as a really long arm stamina bar to hold it up as well. So that's what I've been using for and it's working really, really nicely. 
For the next one, for a bit more of a general build, we'll go back to Prapor 2 into Assault Rifles. We're going to look at the AK-74N. So this one is very, very similar. To start with, we're going to have the same muzzle, the DTK-1. We're going to change over the pistol grip. I think it's actually worthwhile on this gun because using the saw grip takes you up to 49 ergos. You can see the ergonomics on the long AK is a lot lower than on the shorty version. So we're going to use that and go with the butt pad as well. Now, this is where the differences start to occur. We can get a handguard with 2% recoil reduction that goes around the gas block, and that is the CA8 or the RS47, which comes from Peacekeeper Level 2. And what you can do with this, again, is attach the RK4 to it, and this is actually quite a nice combination. Then we can add the EKP the same way as we did last time, and attach this right up here with the Cobra. Note that if you did want to go for the OKP7 or something different, then you can attach this directly to the gun now. You don't need to do something funny around, around this and take the cover off or anything because it's long enough and doesn't have this strange metal part, so it does actually fit now. The 58 ergonomics and 63 recoil is also pretty good. We're going to go into fine parts here, and again, we'll go into just traders to make sure that we're not using anything from the flea market that isn't sensible or whatever. And we get all of these parts with the gun, so we don't need to buy those, but we just need these pieces. So this altogether costs 81,000 rubles, so it's a little bit more than the other one, and that's because this handguard is a little bit more expensive. But I think this is actually a very, very good weapon. Now there is one other thing you can do, actually the best thing to do is to go back into this fine parts. There are some other alternatives for this handguard, and you could do this, it's kind of an interesting little sneaky trick. If you link search the gas tube, and we go into the weapon parts, vital parts, handguards, we can see the ones that are cheap on the flea. Now most of these come from traders, and almost all of these are not very good, and there's the CAA here. But what you can do is look through, and there's a series of handguards called the AKMOE AKM handguards, and they come in all sorts of different colours. So there's a plum one here, there's a stealth grey one here. As you look down, you'll probably see a bunch of others as well. There's a, tons of different colours, there's an FDE one there. And what this means is that people sell these things quite cheap on the flea market, and because they're all individual listings, it's not necessarily that easy to keep a track of. Now this one's 13k at the moment, not actually that much cheaper than this, but what you might find is that although this is 2% recoil reduction and 7 ergo, these ones are 2% recoil reduction and 10 ergonomics. So these are actually pretty good. So if you link search that gas block, go to find one of these, and sometimes they can be trading cheaper than the CAA, and they're actually technically better. What you could do with that is buy that, and then whichever version that you end up managing to buy, whether it's this one or this one or this one or whatever, you then stick that on the gun. And all you have to do at this stage, these you can't get access to because they're Peacekeeper 3, these vertical foregrips or angled foregrips, I guess I should call them. You can buy this M-Lock 4.1 inch guard from Mechanic, and then again, we can attach the RK4 on. And so this gives you a little bit more ergo. This gets us to 61 ergonomics and 63 recoil. So as I said, it depends on whether these are trading nicely on the flea market or not. You can go with the CAA if they're really expensive, but otherwise it can actually be a really nice option. So we go find parts here, because this is the one that was good. And again, we get rid of all of these parts. Oh, we do need this, we don't need this, don't need this, don't need this. That gets us to 84k so it's only a very very slight amount more and you get a little bit more ergonomics this can be kind of cool to do now before we move on to the rest of the loader there are some random things i'd just like to point out on the side of this particular set of handguards you can attach this new piece here which is for lasers and that kind of thing the b11 has it but this one doesn't automatically so you have to have an m lock this actually adds one ergonomics you can add that on and you just get one extra ergo for just having it on there which is kind of weird there's another piece as well. This also works on the 74U. You can attach this RP1 onto the charging handle as well for one extra ergo. I don't think that's worth it. And then there's one final one here. There's another new grip, the Tango Down Battle Grip Pistol Grip. This gives you one extra ergonomics. Again, this is more expensive than the saw grip. These things all cost about 3K for one ergo, which I don't think is worth it in terms of maximizing. But if you did want to get your ergonomics up even further, or say you swapped over to a suppressor or something, then maybe adding this three ergonomics across the three parts might be worth it to you. But I would just go with the base build, to be honest with you, for the most part. But just super quickly, before we move on to the rest of the loadout, why do we actually use the N versions in the first place and why they're so good? So yeah, you might be able to get this AK-74 for a little bit cheaper using the barter, but the problem with this is because we can't use the dovetail mount, we have to use the Bastion instead, which means you have to spend 6k from Skier for that. And then if you want to use the equivalent optic, it's the EKP plus the Cobra Shade as well. And these two things together, we go into the fine parts. We know that this Cobra cost 10k before, but using the one that mounts on top is 15k and the Bastion cover is 6k. So you actually end up losing 10,000 for doing this. So you have to, the barter has to be more worthwhile than 10,000. So you have to basically get the gun for 25k to make it just break even against running one of these other builds, just in terms of the way that the optics attach on. 
With the buffs, PP was increased in price to just over 350 around, which is expensive-ish as each 30 round mag is roughly 10k, but I think it's definitely still worth it because there aren't really any alternatives that perform this well at this particular stage of progression on full auto. So for the rest of the kit to work really well, I think you need to be at Ragman 2 because what this gives you access to is some of the good rigs because you want to be running class 4 yourself. Now there's a bunch of different choice but I think that the Rat Rig or the 6B3TM is going to come back into vogue again partly because the MMAC which was the early game darling in 1212, this used to be one sewing kit and one ripstop which was insane value but now it's had a whiskey added to it and this basically adds 40k to the price of the barter so I don't think this is worth it anymore. You already were running the risk of only having thorax protection when you're using this so now i think the 6b3tm is probably the best rig to use in terms of helmets, a lot of people just kind of settle for this helmet here, which is the SSH steel helmet for 22,000. But I don't think this is very good. The one thing people often miss on this is the ergonomics is minus 13%, which is really quite bad. There is a better barter and a better helmet, which is the Ratnik. This not only has much smaller decrease in ergonomics, but it also covers your ears too. And you can get this for pretty much the same price because there's a bleach barter. And if we look on the marketplace, now these can be really cheap. This is actually cheaper than the SSH helmet. So I think that that is definitely a good pickup for a helmet if you want to run one. You also get them back in insurance all the time because no one picks these up. So our loadout is kind of coming together at this point. We've got the gun, we've got the helmet, and we've got the armor. In terms of the earpiece, I always recommend wearing a headset. The GSSH are the cheapest. A lot of people don't like them. I think they're fine. This is definitely personal preference, so wear whichever one you want. But if you can get used to the GSSH, they work just as well as the others. Don't forget to use a face cover. Any face cover will do. I have a bunch here. Some of them look nicer than others, but this one will do just fine. Basically, you just want to cover your face so that you're not as obvious. This is a lot easier to hide in a bush with than this because it's very distinctive against the rest of your clothing. It actually is contrasting colors like pink versus green. So it's actually really, really bad. Even with a basic balaclava, this is much easier to not get spotted and is gonna save your life. Right, so in terms of other equipment, after sanitary standards part one, you can buy the car kit from Therapist, which is an efficient med. And what I normally do is I take two heavy bleed items with me. The car kit heals both HP and it also stops light bleeding. And then you have the heavy bleeds, which these come from Peacekeeper, and I think they're better because, as you can see, they have a use time of three, whereas the standard S March has a use time of five seconds. So you're actually better off with these, plus you're also spending money with Peacekeeper too, which you need to do regardless. If they're a little bit more expensive than the S Marches, but stopping a heavy bleed in the middle of combat can really be the difference between life and death. So it's worth spending like 1k rubles or something. Do remember also that if you're hotkeying them properly, you can hotkey them both onto the same button. I'll put a link at the end of this video as to how to do that. It's in my hotkeys guide, so go watch that after this video if you're not sure how to put these together, because what this means is that if you press number five and you have a heavy bleed, that will get healed first. Then if you have a light bleed, that will then get healed second. And if you have any damage, that will get healed third. So the prioritization works really nicely using the car first aid kit. If you want to try to be really min-maxy about it, because car kits got bushed up in price by quite a lot. They used to be about 7k or 6k, and now they're 12, so it is a lot more. But if you look on Therapist, it's not usually worth buying the others. The only thing that I would say is that early wipe, because people use pile of meds, which are very, very cheap early on, and they use these to craft AI2 med kits, you can normally get these for about 3k. So that's 6,000 rubles for 200 HP, which is technically a bit more efficient than the car. And in terms of the army bandage, you could buy these for 3,500 or so, because people craft these as well. You can't get them from Therapist until you've done some of the later quests, but on the fleet, it's quite cheap. So for about nine or 10K, you can kind of replicate a car kit if you really, really wanted to do that and optimize it. But I don't think it's worth it because there's also a craft in the hideout where you can use car kits that have got almost no durability left and turn them into Salewas. So I think that the car kit is a better route because you can do that craft and you can basically recycle these and it pretty much makes your meds free if you manage to get them out of your raid. So other than this, I'm bringing two spare magazines of PP rounds. I'm also bringing one of these painkillers, which I've got hotkeyed in case we have a broken or a leg that gets blacked and we need to get out of there. These are very short duration now, 80. They decrease your hydration by 19, which kind of sucks, but as an emergency, I use these. I think it's probably worth it. Again, you can get these on the flea market relatively cheaply. And also you probably pick these up at some point within your raid. They're quite common on scavs. In terms of bags, take any that you like. I usually go for the Burkert or something similar. We go and have a look at the bags that we can get from the traders. I think the smallest one that I would go for, to be honest with you, is probably the MBSS. Let's go into this menu and have a look. So the MBSS is 12,000 rubles, which is not that bad. And it's not that small, but that's probably as, as small as I would go. I normally like the Burkerts. I tend to have enough of these just lying around. You can go for the Scav backpack, which comes from the flea market and is a little bit cheaper than this. It's normally about 18K, but you've got to remember that if you go for one of those, you're going to have 
a big red patch on your back, which is not really ideal. If you have a look at the Scab BP, it's basically an MBSS if you inspect it. An MBSS here, but with a bottle of water sticking out the top and a roll mat at the bottom. But this red is not very good, but it has got the same base inside as the Berka. So that's definitely an, an option. You can get the MBSS also with a trade using a hard drive, which is kind of neat. And you can get that from Peacekeeper. And so hard drives sometimes are a little bit cheaper. Not right now. Sometimes they can go down to about 10k, and so you can get an MBSS that way if you want to a little smaller bag and you're trying to be super optimal. So all of this costs 75k for the gun, 35k for the mags and the ammo, 15k for the headset, 24k for the helmet, 3k for the face cover, 55k for the rig, 28k for the meds, and 18 to 23k for the bag, depending on which one you go for. Altogether, this is about 260,000 rubles, which seems like a lot, but remember that most of the time we're not spending this all in one go to make a loadout completely from scratch as if we have absolutely nothing in our inventory. Typically, you'll have a bag, a helmet, and a headset lying around, probably picked up some painkillers somewhere, so the typical things that you have to buy are usually the gun and the rig as a minimum, which is 130k together. The entire loadout, if you look here, it costs only about 31,000 rubles to insure, which I think is mind-blowingly good value, because I basically get all these things back all the time. I get GSSHs back, I get the helmets back, I get all the balaclavas back, and I took some of the guns out of here already, which I got back, even ones that are slightly more pimped up. This has got an RK3 and a nice stock, and I still managed to get this returned, along with these rigs as well, which I got back in insurance. So final thing, as for our secure container, what I usually do is take two stacks of PP rounds and I take a big med, either an AFAC or an IFAC for emergencies. I have a CMS to heal black limbs and a Vaseline as a long-term painkiller just in case we really need it and a splint to heal breaks. And then I have a docs case in here, which I keep either keys in, cash, whatever, and I use this for because I've been safe running recently. Now, like lots of players, if you have the alpha container, what I've done here is basically said that this square is what I would take if I have the alpha. I think CMS is basically invaluable. Having a CMS kit means that you don't have to have really any long-term painkillers. This is kind of just a luxury to have here because with a CMS and a splint, you can deal with almost all of the ailments. Now, what I would do is I would take a splint actually on you, just the one, and a CMS with you because that will deal with pretty much everything. I would still have a large med and one stack of rounds. It's up to you, really. You could replace an AFAC in here with like a key tool or something else like that if you're on the standard account and maybe use a couple of these AI2s even just craft them in the hideout from piles of meds if you want and take some of these in for spare meds or just really anything you have lying around you know broken slavers or whatever just in case you run into some trouble but that's what I would do if I was on standard account I'd have one stack of rounds one CMS because this is really just a catch-all and fixes everything and an AFAC in case and this has also got an extra heavy bleed on it if you really 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 need it. So next up, I'm going to show you a raid that went really well with the AKS-74U and I think showcases some of its potential features inside in CQB. My kit is not precisely the kit we've talked about because it's been pieced together from lots of other things and I very fortunately found an Attack 2 backpack so I was wearing a very very big backpack but my armour um, and my gun is very similar to the build that we've talked about and basically is the same effectiveness as what we've seen in the video so far. Do, 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 do. I kind of heard somebody. Come on. Granata tut. Давай, мочи.
Right. Oh, okay, guys. I'm quite pleased with that fight. Don't know about you. Quite pleased with that fight. Sounds like a scav. Okay. Go. Get out of here. Please stop. I had enough of this. The guy outside tried to um, tried to use a grenade. Is basically his experience is the reason why I don't use grenades anymore. Especially if you're on your own. Oh my god! Just leave me alone! As fast as I can pack the mags, we're emptying them. We'll go get him later. Go get him later. Right, so this man's got a USEC trooper. That's pretty darn cool. Grab those, drop those. Grab that, drop that. So next, what I'm going to do... I'm actually going to open these. This is what we came here for in the first place. Yeah, this man's level 34. It's pretty... He's been going hard. I'm trying to find USBs. That's what we really want. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, this dude's level 13. I think so. You can go into raid with it? Yeah. Oh, and then there's this guy outside. Yes. Oh, a fellow enjoyer. He's a USEC armband. Got it suppressed. Got this bad boy kitted out. Another O scope, though. Okay. I think that will do. So do go and check out the med binding video next to put everything onto one easy key when you get hurt in raid. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.